Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. This is episode 625, ladies and gentlemen. And holy cow, what an NXT this was. It was the craziest NXT. It kicked off with Baron Corbin walking through into the Performance Center and trying to stare down from some of the NXT superstars. And they don't want to look at him. They said nothing. He tells one of the stagehands to play, have him play my music. He comes out. He dresses Carmelo Hayes in, NXT, in the NXT locker room, saying they're soft and all that. And Ilya Dragunov gets, interrupts him, gets right in his face and said, I'm not soft. And or anything else. And then he challenges him to a matchup and he said, you better bring it on. So, as uh, Ilya Dragunov was departing the ring, Trick Williams attacked Baron Corbin. So, uh, and so, uh, and chased Baron Corbin out of the ring. That leads to a match later on that night. Thea Hale was, uh, was getting out of the, uh, was, was getting out of, of the performance center after training with Charlie Dempsey and Drew Gulags and her legs are getting tired. And then, and said, okay. And she's like, you know, and then she would talk to Duke Hudson. I was like, hey, what's going on in there? You know, I'm working with Charlie Dempsey and the Hale, you see. But they made you cry. And she goes, I know, but they, t they toughened me up a little bit. And then she starts screaming back at Charlie Dempsey and all that. It was funny. And then she tried to uh, throw Duke Hudson. And he's like, hey, 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 my lanta. So, and kind of like, you know, Duke Hudson was pretty shocked. And, uh, but during the commercial break, I'm just going to scratch my back. It, or it's itchy right now. Uh, during the commercial break, Braun Breaker laid out Ilya Dragunov. Hopefully, we have still got a medical update, but knowing Dragunov, he'll want to fight. So I'm sure. So, so they had a six-person tag team match with Diamond Mind, a team of Ivy Nile and the Creed Brothers, took on the schism that would be um, the dyad and and going in the ring for the first time. Fourth generation superstar Ava Rain it was like fourth generation. She is the real-life daughter of Dwayne the Rock Johnson. A former WWE superstar in his own right, a legend in his own right. His father was Rocky Johnson, which is that Rocky, that's her grandfather, but her great grandfather, the High P Chief Peter Mayavia. That's right, the High Chief Peter Mayavia. So she's a first fourth, fourth generation superstar in WWE history, and she made the pinfall after using her mask to headbutt uh, Ivy Nile to pick up the victory. A little cheating, but more on the schism later on. Uh, Chaney Stax Lorenzo uh, uh, visited uh, Tony D'Angelo in prison, and Stax has has every believed that Gallus did all this because they didn't want to face Lorenzo and and D'Angelo for the tag team titles. And, and then and Tony D'Angelo says, "Get things done. You're the underboss." So Mr. Stein and Von Wagner were sitting down waiting on their third psychiatrist. And here I am thinking, oh boy. And the first week psychiatrist, it didn't work out. You know. It it didn't work it didn't work out. He walked out and he roughed up the second psychiatrist. And then this just I'm like, we gotta get this third one. And I'm thinking, uh oh. I'm like, uh oh, I, is is Dr. Shelby actually is the third psychiatrist? Is Dr. Shelby going to be the one helping Von Wagner? It would be priceless if it was him. But no, it's like a gorgeous blonde lady. And I'm going, and Von Wagner goes, you know what? I'm going to give this a shot. And he has a smile on his face. I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm like, he had a smile on his face. I got this. I'm like, oh boy. I can't think the session's going to be a lot. <laughs> I just can't believe Von freaking Wagner, dude. 
<laughs> He's got he has more style than the than his father and his so and his storyline uncle, the Beverly brothers. <laughs> He's got more game than both of those guys. Oh correct me. Von <laughs> Wagner, dude, you're the freaking man. So, anyways, uh, Danny Palmer went one-on-one -on -one with the returning Blair Davenport. Davenport did pick up the victory. But then, another NXT free agent shock. Dana Brooke returned to NXT, and she says, I'm here to enter the Battle Royal, and I'm going to win it. All right? And Dana Brooke got her start in NXT, just like Baron Corbin did. I'll tell you what, man. This is going <laughs> to... It gets more interesting. This episode of NXT gets more interesting. Uh, then uh, Mackenzie Mitchell interviewed Tiffany Stratton, asking her who, who should win the battle royale. She, and Tiffany Stratton's got some, a little bit of respect for a liar of Valkyria. That's something. To, and she says, push, she pushed me, but you know what? You're not going to get close, so toodles. <laughs> toodles over. Uh, another matchup um, this led to the, uh, the, uh, the fight Trick Williams and Baron Corbin. And... Um, and Trick Williams' um, leg gave out at one point, and Baron Corbin did pick up the victory at... Oh, excuse me. Oh, excuse me. Baron Corbin did pick up the victory over um, over Trick Williams. Hard-hitting home troops with uh, um, Nathan Frazier and guest star Dragon Lee, and Dragon Lee made fun of Noam Dar's crew. <laughs> Nowhere and the rent of friends. That's a good one. <laughs> Dragon Lee you know, and and Nathan Fraser. Those two guys are pretty hilarious. And uh, you know, oh, excuse me. Mm. It's almost bedtime for me, but don't worry. I'm gonna upload this video before that before that even happens. So anyway, hard hitting home troops. And it seems like Nathan Fraser's issued a challenge to Norm Dar for the Heritage Cup Championship next week. And that match has been made official. Uh, Mackenzie Mitchell interviewed uh, Mustafa Ali, asking him why he's in NXT. So an opportunity. Wesley interrupts Ali and was going because Ali goes, nah, 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 nah. "I'll earn my shot." So Joe Gacy faced Mustafa Ali one on one, and uh, <sighs> yeah, man, what is with me? And Mustafa Ali did pick up the victory over Joe Gacy. That prompted the Dyad to attack Ali. But then Wesley and Tyler Bate came to the aid to even the score to repay the favor that Ali gave them last week. What did I see? Meanwhile, Josh Brixton and Brooks Jensen were pep talking Fallon Henley about her about her involvement in the uh, women, number one contenders women's battle royal. But then he and then. <laughs> Idris and Opie and Malik Blake, it's your fault. You guys started this whole thing. And we fight each other, get to know each other better. And, and they went down. And then Hank Walker and Tank Ledger. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then Hank Walker talking about Taylor Swift. Oh, boy, I'm a Swifty. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyways. So, interrupt them. And then after. After, like, hey, we'll get some, if Fallon wins, we'll get some brewskis. And now you speak my language. We'll, we'll go. And then, uh, after you know, all the teams went, he just knew, hey, we should do this next week. Hey, what? I'll see you next week. And I'll walk away. And then Gallus, actually, Gallus goes, interrupts him first and says, hey, good luck with that. You ain't going to be close to Gallus, boys, on top. And then, uh, Mackenzie Mitchell interviewed uh, Royal Dar, oh, man, to the last legend, Jakar Jackson, and they, and they go, you know what? It's fine. But you can't stand against the metaphor. Really? The metaphor. Is that what you're going with? Oh, boy. That's not the new tag team name. Goodness me. Anyways, Eddie Thorpe went one-on-one -on -one with Damon Camp. And with Thorpe... Um, pick up the victory, but Damon Camp's right foot was on the rope, so the referee did not see it. So that's why Damon Camp was arguing about that. So I'm sure Eddie Thorpe and Damon Camp will continue on. Gigi Dolan was talking to her br little brother Miles, saying that she'll win the Battle Royal. And then Keanu James um, interrupts Gigi Dolan. Both ladies argue, but then Daba Kato walked by in front of him, shutting them up real quick. And Daba Kato went went one on one with Scripps, the unmasked Reggie. And uh, Scripps picks up the victory after Axiom was 
distracting Dabakato, but then Dabakato was such in a bad mood, he attacked both scripts and asked him after the match. Schism discussed what happened tonight. Joe Gacy was upset because he lost to Ali, and that's why he says, well, we came there, but we did pick up a victory over Diamond Mine. And he goes, yes, yes, but I gotta figure, you know, figure myself out, so, so there's that. Then, um, and then, uh, uh, Tyler, uh, Tyler Bate and Wesley talking about, um, about talking to Mustafa Ali about what happened, and Mustafa Ali, well, why did you get you tight, two guys go at it? But they said, you know what, we didn't want to jeopardize it. After we win our matchup, I got a Money in the Bank qualifying match this Friday, uh, but then the next Tuesday, we'll figure out everything else. And they said, and then, you know, Wesley and Tyler Bate wants to, you know, uh, they want to fight, but they said, no, we'll wait on that, and so they do respect each other, but Schism wants to put an end to the farce, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens. Now, the number one contenders women's battle royal. This was crazy, to say the least. Every, you know, everybody was in it and all that, and everybody was fighting each other, and it was it was crazy. It, it was crazy matchup. Gigi Dawn was one of the earlier eliminate, uh, entrants being eliminated in the matchup. I was kind of shocked, and then and to let Keanu James and her... Oh, excuse me. Oh, man. Absolute unfinished business. Um... Uh, and there was one part where uh, Roxanne Perez was trying to go after uh, Blair Davenport made an appearance at ringside, and Roxanne Perez tried to go after after, her, but then Tatum Paxley ends up eliminating her, and then ends up sacrificing herself. And but I know I uh, J C Jane eliminated uh, Roxanne Perez after uh, both Davenport and and Paxley beat up. Uh, Roxanne Perez, and I'm looking, I was a dad from Porn Paxley's a team, tag team. That's going to be dangerous. And, uh, and for a while, uh, Thea Hell was outside the ring when she didn't, when she went through the ropes attacking for with a trust fall and um, Oral Mensa and them. So, Jakara Jackson was eliminated, Lash Legend. It was down, it was down between Dana Brooke, the surprise, one of the surprise, uh, appearances, and Cora Jade, but then Thea Hale was in the matchup. She was never eliminated, and uh, and it got to the point where both women were struggling. Out, uh, was it both uh, Dana Brooke and Cora Jade were struggling near the ropes, and Thea Hale took that opportunity and eliminated both of those ladies and wins the Battle Royal. And the cool thing was Chase U was celebrating the ring. Even Duke Hudson was shocked. And then the Cavender Twins, it seems like the Cavender Twins are on board. Which chase you, and then, you know, and Thea Hale's doing this, and you see Drew Gulag and Charlie Dempsey just clapping. And I'm sure Andre Chase has got this big, wide smile on his face, saying, yes, that's, what, that's my star pupil in this one. So, so when is that match going to happen? Well, uh, the folks at the bump will be talking to Tiffany Stratton, but we're not done yet, Braun Breaker. It's interviewed by the camera guy. Why'd you attack Elliot Dragunov? You know, Dragunov is full of, you know what, and I'm just paraphrasing everything. And, you know, and we'll, I'm going to show everybody from the bottom up to the top. And speaking of the top, and he directed this, and he says, Seth freaking Rollins, our world heavyweight champion. How about this? You come to NXT. You put the title online against me. I'm going, what? What? Braun Breaker? Did Braun Breaker just call out Seth Rollins? I got to see what the response of this one was. It's because uh, I'm sure Seth Rollins has probably seen that on Twitter, and I'm going, and, I, <laughs> and, and I'm going, oh, boy. And then, <laughs> and here's the fun part. Uh, I'm sure people in the bump are going to be talking about this. Cause I, because it, <laughs> I really, this is going to be insane, folks. NXT's gotten really, really insane, man. Let me tell you. So, oh. Excuse me, man. Oh, shoot. Oh, mother. Oh, mother Hubbard. Let me tell you. Well, that's all the time we have on the show. Uh, episode 625 of Eric Lehman's shenanigans in 1977. Seth Rollins and Braun Breaker. Let's go. Let's dance. Let's see what happens here. World Heavyweight title on the line. Could this, could, this could change the whole con complex of Monday Night Raw. Who knows? We'll see what happens. 
I'm sure Rollins will retain, but might I digress? But a lot of things are happening. If if um, if the, if Braun Breaker wins the title, it looks like the brass could be high on Braun Breaker. Who knows for sure? So we'll see what happens tomorrow. On, uh, we'll we'll see what happens. We got the bump and everything else going on. Who knows? All right. And uh, again, I just picked it up. Picked this up today, earlier this afternoon. Super Mario Bros. movie uh, earlier this morning, I should say. It's at Walmart right now. Go pick it up, man. Twenty bucks. So that's all the time we have on the show. I will see you guys later. So and tomorrow we'll put we'll spin we'll we'll face the devil and beat the devil with the Joker's Wild. And we get we got AEW Dynamite, which I will be um, trying to live react with my good friend Jordy Jordy Scow because he's doing his show. So up until then, Mister Announcer, please take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both of raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.